Hello and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at Suku Spring 2024. This is going to be part one. So we're going to take a look at the items I received in PR. The collection actually launches at Selfridges on January 25th and it's going to be at a few other retailers as well after that. So we'll go over that in the details in just a minute. We're also going to take a look at these two Lunar New Year brushes. We have the Beautylish brush which has this really beautiful, really cute purple dragon. And then this one here from Koyoto. And this is a, it's like the monochrome Yoshiki handle. And then we have an engraved Chinese dragon. So we're gonna take a look at these two brushes, see how they compare. The price points are pretty comparable. So see which one of these fits well into your collection if you're interested. I personally love dragons. I'm very excited to see all of the Year of the Dragon stuff. So let's get started with the Suku and we're gonna start off with arm swatches. All right, so this is going to be the quad in 134. And let's go ahead and take a look at this. I have to say this is Kind of like, you know, those mauve tones that we've seen a lot of kind of warmer mauves. This is kind of the palette I've been waiting for. Uh, I absolutely love, you can see we have this matte base shade. It's kind of like a nude mauve. And then we have this pink shimmer. It does have a little bit of warmth in there. And then this marbled shade is kind of a white, it's white, but you can see we've got all those different colors kind of in there. So we've got like peach and there's a little blue and so forth. So when you really mix them together, you get kind of this whitish peach shade. And then this shade here, you can see in the reel I have on the side, it did have the Suku logo in um, a pink glitter. That was just kind of a top coat, but the actual shade itself is gonna be a matte cocoa brown. And I think this is just such a great everyday palette. You have kind of those rosy, mauvey tones, yet it's not too warm, it's not too cool. It's a pretty neutral palette. I think it's great for every day. So we've got that. And then I also have the Pure Color Blush in 147. So as you're looking at this, you might think this is matte, but it's actually not. So we have this peachy shade here, and it's really gonna be more of a satin matte. You can see that we do have just put a little more of it here. We do have kind of this satin sheen to it. So if we were to buff that onto the cheeks, just as blush, you can really see that sheen, that yellow gold kind of come through. So that's what it looks like buffed in. That's actually what I have for blush. And then if we were to mix the two shades, kind of go right through the middle, this is what we're gonna get. And then just the purple itself, this is intended to be kind of your highlighter. So you can either mix these together or, you know, kind of separate them. But you can see we do have a cooler tone lavender highlighter here. And we get a little bit of that luminosity from it as well. So I would say both the highlight and the blush actually have some luminosity on their own. So if you're going to mix all of these together and buff them onto the skin, this is what it's gonna look like. So it's going to be pretty similar to just the orange on its own. The purple does not contribute a lot of color, but does cool it off a little bit. It makes it a little bit lighter. In addition, we have one of the liquid eyeshadows in shade 103. I just wanna show you, see my hand? This is the residue from wiping it off after using it. This does have some glitter, and this is actually a really beautiful shade. So this is 103. And you can see it kind of looks more purpley there. And let's put a little bit more on here so we can kind of spread that out. One of the things I think is interesting is, you know, we've got warm and cool tones. It doesn't get super warm, but when you buff this out and you get a thinner layer, we do get a little bit more warmth, but we really do have a lot of kind of that blue tone violet in there. And even when you buff that out onto the skin, it's still evident. And there is going to be some shimmer in here. This shade is beautiful on its own, but these also, they can work really well as a primer or on top of or underneath the powder shadows. So we'll take a look at those. And then we have a new lipstick formula from Suku. So this is called the Moisture Glaze Lipstick. It comes in 10 shades. These are permanent. So everything else we've looked at so far is limited edition, but the lipstick is permanent. And you purchase the refill here. 
and you can see we do have a cap. This cap goes on very well. No issues taking it on or off. You can definitely twist this up and use it without a case. However, this cap does not secure enough to throw this in a handbag. So if you want to purchase just a refill, it's totally usable, but I would not recommend throwing it into a handbag of any sorts because this cap will stay on securely if you're kind of leaving it alone, but if it's bumping around into things and jumbling around, it this cap will come off. So you can purchase the case which looks like this, so it does have a click closure. It looks very similar to the previous Moisture Rich lipstick cases. And these here are, you can see the difference. The Moisture Rich, we have the gold top. Here we have the gold top, but we have the Suku logo in it. So that's gonna be our main difference here. And then our refill is going to just kind of click in securely. So make sure you actually snap it in and hear that click. And this is the shade number five. I have to say, I am absolutely loving this formula. This is really nice. If you've been looking for something like the Chantecaille Lip Cheeks or the Sicily Vita Rouge Shine lipsticks, those both have fragrance. And although I love them, I would love to have a fragrance-free option. Now we've got it. So very, very happy to see these and that they look beautiful on the lips and they perform beautifully. So let's go ahead and move on to some demos. We'll talk about the details of all of these items as well. So while we're looking at the collection as a whole, we do have two eyeshadow palettes that are coming out. Shades number 134, which is what I have, and then 135. And I am going to attempt to purchase all of these items when they launch at Selfridges. We also have two of the pure color blushes, 146 and 147. So I have 147 here. There are three different shades of the liquid luster eyes, the, the liquid eyeshadow. Number six will be a permanent shade. And then we have 103 and 104. And again, I have 103 here. And then we have 10 new moisture glaze lipsticks, which are all permanent. I think they look absolutely beautiful. The collection itself is going to launch at Selfridges on January 25th. It's going to launch at Le Bon Marche. It's going to launch at Le Bon Marche Rive Gauche on February 1st and February 8th at Harrods, Liberty London, and Cult Beauty. So you definitely have quite a few opportunities to pick up items from this collection. You know, as they are going to kind of spread out, we've got different different opportunities depending on where you'd like to purchase. Now, according to Suku, this collection, it's reflecting a spring landscape. The rippling water sparkles with oozing colors while the ripples spread smoothly like a textile. Suku's new color collection is inspired by the bliss of spring. The rich colors infused with beautiful vitality gently embrace an individual's expressions, your unique beauty and strength. Emphasizing shimmer and glow with a touch of sparkle, the collection achieves a colorful and fresh look. Now looking specifically at the eyeshadows, I have palette 134, which is described as an eyeshadow palette inspired by a landscape of beautiful cherry blossoms reflected on water. The palette features airy spring colors with a hint of smokiness and highly pigmented rose shimmer that brings a pop of brightness. As usual, the palette has 6.2 grams of product. It is made in Japan and we have a one year shelf life. It comes with two double-ended utensils for use with the shadows as well. I have to say, I really love this color story. I think it is beautiful. You can see that this soft matte kind of rosy mauve nude, this first shade in the palette is a really beautiful base color. It's just a great one and done for a barely there look as well. The rose shimmer, rose shimmer, you know, I think it's a really pretty pink without being too pink. Uh, so I really, I love that. We've got a little bit of some nude tones in there. It's much more neutral than what we typically see with pink or rosy shimmers. I think it's gorgeous and they complement each other very well. And then the marbled shade, this is the shade that I actually like the least. I like the shade itself a lot, but I do find this formula is a little bit messier. It's a little bit more 
fallout prone. So it's got a bunch of different shimmers. They just, they're not as firmly pressed as the straight up shimmer, like the rosé shimmer. And I'm not sure if it's because of the texture in the palette or what, but it just doesn't seem to lay quite as smoothly as the others. It's an absolutely beautiful shade. Uh, I love having the peach and the, the purple and the white and the pink kind of all mixed together, but the formula itself is not my favorite. However, I think it makes a beautiful accent on the eyes and I really like using it particularly in the inner corner or on the brow bone. The Deep Matte Cocoa, this is a beautiful cocoa with just a touch of mauve in there. So I think it's a really beautiful shade. And when I'm saying we've got a touch of mauve in there, you know, that's more of a true mauve with a little bit of plum and rose and so forth mixed in there. So it's not gonna be very pink. It's not really a pink brown. It's kind of more, it's a little bit plummier. So I think it's a really beautiful palette. This is such a great everyday palette. I'm really happy with the color stories here. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that Suku products in general are some of my favorites. They are one of my all-time favorite brands. So this quad, it definitely does not disappoint. Now, moving on to the Liquid Luster Eyes, this is a relatively new product. These came out towards the end of last year, and it's a liquid eyeshadow that you can use on its own. You can pair it with the powder shadows either underneath or on top of them. It's a very versatile product. When you use it underneath, it can definitely act as an eye primer. Now, when I have worn these on their own, because I purchased like all of them <laughs> when they came out, when I used them on their own, after a while I would get some, you know, faint creasing in the crease and so forth. So I do typically like to pair these with others, but I do wanna note that shade 103 here does seem to perform a little bit better than some of the other shades I have. Uh, you know, even after a longer day, I'm not really getting the creasing with this. And I love this color. This is beautiful on its own, but I really love kind of building it up and getting that purple in there. You know, it's just, it's such a beautiful shade and it pairs beautifully with this palette or on its own. So I really, I'm really loving this 103 and I definitely plan on picking up at least the sage gold shade as well, number 104 from these as well. Now, according to Suku, it says, introducing one new permanent and two limited edition sparkling cream eyeshadows that are joining the cult liquid luster eyes collection eye collection. Inspired by the dynamic spring landscapes, these soft sparkly shadows add beautiful color in just one swipe. Now the shade 103 is called Nuance Viola and it's inspired by violet flowers. This shade comprises of pink and blue shimmer with an undertone of violet to create a unique shade. I have to say, I think this shade is gorgeous. I am so glad that I have this one, uh, you know, it's definitely gonna be a go-to. I would highly recommend this one. You can see in the demos that it really works well in a variety of different applications. <sighs> so overall in summation for both sets of the eyeshadows, the powder and the liquid, I think that they are all phenomenal. I absolutely love this collection. I love the colors that they use. I'm very happy to see some pinks that are a bit more mauvey. You've got those plummy tones. It's definitely much more modern. These are great for every day. You've definitely got some nude neutral tones in there, making them incredibly wearable. And they're just really soft, beautiful shades. So very, very happy with these. Let's go ahead and move on to the Pure Color Blush. Now, according to Suku, the Pure Color blushes are inspired by the floating cherry blossom petals and budding flowers. There are two limited edition shades. We have 146, which I do not have yet. This is the floral pink and misty blue combination. And that's described as having a yellow toned pink. And it's created by blending pink pearls and pale blue highlights to deliver a natural flush that blends smoothly into the skin. I do plan on picking this one up. And then 147 is the shade that I have, which is Soil Orange and Pale Purple. It's a deep orange blush that creates contours on the bone structure, while the Pale Purple Ombre contains gold pearls, which add a highlight to the skin. Now, I have to say, I think it's gorgeous. I really love the sheen that you can get from this orange when you buff that into the skin. It really does kind of add this sun-kissed look to the skin without being too orange or too golden. Now, they're describing it as a deep orange blush. 
Uh, I would not say it's deep, but it definitely can be built up. And that's kind of how pure color blushes are in general. They are typically never going to be super deep, but they are a very buildable product. And they almost always have this ombre color story where you blend to a highlight. Now, I have to say, I really like the sheen on the blush. I think it builds up beautifully. And I think if you put this on the right placement of your cheekbones, you really get a nice highlight of your bone structure. Uh, kind of like a natural highlight without being a highlighter. So it does actually kind of, it, it's kind of a combo between a blush and a highlighter based on the color itself even. The pale purple, I have to say, this is the shade that I could not resist. I really could not wait to try this purple, but I was hoping to see a little bit more purple from it than what I see. The purple itself is very, very light. You're not actually getting that much lavender from it, it's very light and subtle. So even mixed with the orange or separate from the orange, it's just not super visible. I was hoping the purple would have just a little bit more pigment to it than it does. Overall, I think it's a beautiful blush. It's gonna perform beautifully on a variety of skin tones, but I think those with warmer skin tones in general, warmer undertones, are going to absolutely love this combination. And again, the purple is not very cool, so it's just gonna add just a little bit of subtlety to the look. So I think it's a really beautiful combination. Moving on to the new lipstick. So this is the Suku Moisture Glaze Lipstick. And this is going to be part of the core collection. So these are going to be permanent. And it's described as a lipstick that glazes the lips with a rich glossy color, creating a plump and fuller lip that has a blurring effect on vertical fine lines. And you can see in the lip demo how that performs. So according to Suku, we have a rich balm texture that gradually melts. So it's an oil rich formula. It softly fades while leaving behind the protective properties of a balm. And the rich glowing color applies evenly. So they have nature derived spherical powder particles, which allow the formula to gently melt for easier application and a longer lasting finish. We have a softly opaque finish ranging from bright to deep. Each shade is designed to give an exquisite translucent finish and wash of color. Long lasting hydration, it's formulated with squalene and sodium hyaluronate for long lasting hydration. And again, we have refillable packaging. It says it's the first Suku lipstick in a refillable tube featuring all of the luxurious qualities you know from Suku, but now you can refill your favorite shades over and over. And Suku has done things before where you buy, you know, sort of the refill, but it wasn't a true refillable lipstick. What it was, was you would get the base of the lipstick with one of those temporary caps and you would have to buy a cap separately. That's how the sheer mattes are sold. But this time we're actually getting a true refillable lipstick. So I'm very excited to see that. I think that was definitely a great change. As I mentioned, there are 10 permanent shades joining this line, and I have shade number five, Yuyukari, which is described as cassis purple that has a vibrant edge, and I have to say it's gorgeous. You can put this on very sheerly for a very soft, light look, or you can build this up. Now, the actual lipstick itself is incredibly comfortable on the lips. It's smooth, it's nourishing, it definitely feels more like a melted lip balm lipstick, it is similar to something like the Chantecaille Lip Sheiks or the Lafito Rouge Shines from Sisley. But again, we don't have any of that fragrance in there. And I would have to say that performance wise, the pigmentation remains on my lips a little bit longer than those do. So depending on the shade for the other formulas, we can range anywhere from like two to five hours. You know, the deeper shades obviously lasting a little bit longer. I would give the Suku an additional hour or two of wear time. So again, your lighter shades typically, you know, pigmentation doesn't necessarily stain your lips as long as a deeper shade. So keep that in mind. But you know, overall these perform really well and we will definitely have extended wear tests and more colors in part two when I'm able to purchase more shades. So just a quick look, this is the Suku Sheer Matte Lipstick. So you can purchase them like this with this little cap 
this is previously what they had in place of a refillable lipstick and then if you wanted to purchase the cap separately you could do so and you would have this full component so again now we have the actual true refill and i'm really happy to see that not only do we have a refill that actually you know works clips in you can buy refills and so forth but i'm very happy to see that the refill itself can be used on its own so we're going to do just a few quick comparisons. This is a palette in 134. This is a permanent palette in 01. So this is kind of the closest match to the color story. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at these. So I'm going to just swatch the one, oh, the 01 palette kind of right here so we can kind of see that with it as well. So you can see here's 01 versus 143 or 134 i'm sorry so you can see here that this is going to be a little bit pinker we do still have kind of a neutral shade this is going to be a little bit more brown it's more of a true taupe this brown here is going to be warmer it doesn't have those cooler plummy tones of this the pink here is going to be a matte instead and our shimmer is going to be a very light champagne similar to this but a little bit smoother so it's a pretty similar palette there are definitely some differences between the two for my personal complexion i prefer the 134 because i think these like smokier plumier tones work a little bit for me but i think that this is a great alternative so you know if you miss the 134 palette the 01 i think is a great option if you already have 01 you might want to you know, really consider whether or not 134 is one that you need in your collection. All right, and then this is the 147 blush. This is 143. You can see that this is gonna be more of like a nude brown shade, but what I wanted to compare here is actually the lavender at the edge. So this is another like kind of lavender highlight. You can see here that it is going to be a little bit different they still are similar, but the lavender in the 143 is going to be a little bit pinker. So we've got a little bit more pink in there and it's, I would say a little less sparkly as well. We do have a little bit of micro glitter in the 147 blush that I don't really notice in the 143. There's just a little bit more shimmer here. Now our base shade, I'll just go ahead and swatch that as well. This is going to be much more brown. Let's put it right here but we still again have a little bit of that orange vibe you can see we've got a little orange red and brown kind of mixed together for this one so if you happen to already have this palette this is my closest comparison all right and just another quick comparison this is the 103 uh liquid eyeshadow and this one here is number three so you can see straight off the bat that they are not going to be a match but this is a permanent shade this is going to be more taupe can see it's going to be more of a brown shade here but actually it is the closest one i have in the permanent collection our next closest would actually be this pink shade here which is number one so let me go ahead and swatch this one as well so i feel like this purple is kind of like filling in a gap that we have in the collection so let's go ahead i've got one comparison here for the lipstick as well so this is the chantakai lip chic in orchid so this came out last year this is kind of the closest shade that i have in either sisley or chantakai but you can see that orchid it's going to have more pink more red in it whereas we definitely have more purple in the number five from suku and just another quick comparison this is the suku sheer matte in 114 which i just wanted to kind of compare this color because it does have a little bit of purple in there as well but you can see this one is going to have a lot more pink it's definitely not as as purple and then we also i also want to take a look at the hermes lipstick in prune noir so this is one of my absolute favorite shades Let's go ahead and put this, we'll put this right up here and kind of build this up. Now this is gonna be more of a lip balm lipstick. You can see that the colors are gonna be similar, but we've got a little bit more rose in the Prune Noir. So making it just a little bit less cool. There's a little bit more of a rosy red 
hue to it. Now let's go ahead and move on to the brushes. All right, so I first wanted to introduce both of these brushes here. So this is the Lunar New Year brush from Beautylish this year. So you can see we've got purple dragon sitting in a moon. You've got these beautiful trees. And one of the things that I think is really beautiful, I love the fact that it goes all the way around, but these trees themselves, we've got a little bit of pink and purple in there. And it's almost as though they seem to change color when the light hits it. It's really more just the light shining on a particular shade of it that emphasizes one more than the other but it does make everything look like it's kind of changing color. Same thing with the clouds here. So the dragon itself, I think it is gorgeous, really beautiful brush. The brush itself, we're looking at squirrel hair and this is gonna be very similar to the previous years. So these are, I, I've only picked up some of the previous years, but you can see we've got kind of the general brush shape. This is last year's year of the bunny brush. And by the way, Beautylish has all of the previous years for sale too. And you can see this one also has a beautiful, beautiful handle. It's one of my favorites. So you can see we have kind of this oval ferrule here. The brushes are about the same size and shape. This one here is Year of the Mouse, which you can see this one is from several years ago. And this one here is a little bit rounder than the this year and last year's this one's a little bit more pinched of a ferrule and you can see that we have a little bit it's a little bit more square whereas this is a little bit more vertical and the hairs here start to kind of get longer from here whereas on this it actually starts a little bit higher up giving it more of that square appearance and then this is the oxen which again is going to be a pretty similar shape to this one and the bunny. So that's kind of one of the cutesy options for Lunar New Year. But this brush, I bought this from Fude Bobo and I haven't seen it anywhere else yet, but I'll definitely keep you guys updated and post when I see it. It's currently sold out. If it pops back up, I'm buying a second one. <laughs> I love this brush. So first of all, this is engraved. It's deeply engraved. You can actually see it. It's cut into the handle and we've got kind of this beautiful Chinese dragon. We have Yoshiki engraved here as well. He's our master artisan. And we are looking at Blue Fox. We have a domed, this is gonna be more of a blush brush. So this is gonna be more of your traditional style dragon versus our more cutesy, more animated style dragon in the Beautylish brush. Now, price-wise, these are pretty comparable. They're about the same price. This one is slightly less expensive than the Beautylish by a few dollars. So it's pretty comparable, but you can see that they're both gonna fill different niches in your collection. Now, I don't have a brush that is exactly like this one, but just a few quick shape and size comparisons. This is the Sonia G Masterface, which is one of my favorites. You can see this also has kind of a dome shape. It's gonna be a little bit wider. We have a round ferrule for both of them. This is a mix of dyed and undyed goat hair. It's gonna be a little bit larger. So here's the Blue Fox versus the Masterface. Another comparison, this is the Classic Cheek from the Sonia G Sky series. So she has another Classic Cheek in the Fundamental series. Uh, so just to note the difference here, but you can see this is gonna be significantly smaller. And this actually has an oval ferrule. And then next up, these two are from Coyoto. And they are kind of similar in shape, maybe not quite as much of that ball shape as the Yoshiki Chinese dragon shape here, but uh, it is similar. These also have a mix of hair, and I believe it also came in a black glossy handle as well. But these two are the same brush here. So let's just take a look at one. You can see our difference here. We both have round ferrule on both of these. This is gonna be a little bit bigger, fluffier. They are both great for blush, but what I really like about this one here is it stays. You can see that the br bristles kind of kind of stay together and it creates a really nice 
brush for targeted application because the bristles aren't really flaying all over. Let's take a look at the demos. So in the demos, I'm using the new Clay de Peau press powder with both of the brushes so you can see how they apply for powder. As you can see, the Beautylish brush definitely is better for face powder than the Coyoto. And you know, that's basically your size and shape. So that's really your preference for, you know, application with these brushes. The Beautylish is definitely more of a powder brush. Now, can it be used with blush? It definitely can, but I would definitely recommend it with lighter blushes, ones that you just kind of want more of a subtle wash of color. If you're looking for a targeted application, the Coyoto brush is definitely going to be a better option. So this can really be used to apply things in a smaller targeted area more easily. And you can also kind of buff this in. You can do a swirly motion with this as well. So it is going to give you a nice soft application. And of course, it's very soft on the skin. So just a few details about both of the brushes. The Beautylish brush is done in the Maki lacquer that we see and love in a lot of Fude brushes. And I really love the way the light can hit the different pieces of the lacquer. And, you know, it almost gives you a little bit of a dual chromatic finish when they're using the different colors there. We do have squirrel hair. Both of these are Fude brushes, so they are going to be hand bundled. Nothing is cut. We're looking at blue squirrel for a retail price of 125 US dollars. And it is limited edition. The Koyoto brush has a more traditional Chinese dragon and it's actually engraved. We're not looking at a Maki design here. So this is actually kind of carved into the wooden handle. And we're looking at blue fox hair for the brush fibers. Again, Fude, it's hand bundled and so forth. In this case, we have a round, more of a pom-pom style head. I personally love these small round domed brush shapes and I find that it is really difficult to find one that is perfect for blush. I see a lot of them that are a little bit larger. This one is a perfect size for blush application in my opinion. And I just think that both of these brushes are exquisite. I absolutely love them. Now, as I mentioned, I'm very happy to have both of these brushes. I actually purchased a couple extra of the Beautylish brushes originally because, you know, dragons, they are well loved by myself and by my daughters. So they will be keepsakes for them when they get a little bit older and they can appreciate these things a little bit more. They're a little more responsible. Uh, but the Coyoto, I only purchased one and I'm really hoping it restocks because I definitely want another one of these. Not only just because of the gorgeous design on here, but also just because this particular shape and the softness of the fibers, they just really make it to be like an ideal domed blush brush shape. And I love these because, I mean, look at the way the fibers kind of swirl and they kind of stay together. They're not, it's not airy. It's more like, Think of like a liquid, you know, they're kind of flowing like water would. I mean, it's, it's awesome. So they're very soft. You can actually put them on because of the dome shape. You can pat on, you can brush on. The round shape allows you to kind of buff it in as well. And I think that is just very useful. Now our dragon shape, again, you can definitely use this for blush. It is gonna be a larger brush, so we do have a little bit more airiness to it, but I personally really like these for uh, powder. You could definitely use it for bronzer if you are somebody who loves a larger bronzer brush, but know that this is gonna be a little bit airy. So I also do use these with lighter blushes, like something like the Suku Pure Color Blush, or something like the Sisley Lorca Day blushes. So something where you've got a really light color and you're just putting on a soft wash of color. So you can see the difference in how these perform. They are both incredible brushes. And I don't think you can go wrong with either one. So I'm very happy with everything that I featured here in this video today. The brushes are both standouts. The Suku items, I absolutely love all of these items, 
but I have to say, you know, I think maybe the standout for me is this new lipstick formula. I love these high shine type of lipsticks. I find them moisturizing, comfortable. I do actually notice a bit of a blurring effect on my lip lines with, you know, this particular formula. And I think they've kind of taken, you know, some great features of what we've seen in the Chantecaille and Sisley formulas that are similar, but they've improved upon it. And I'm very happy that there is no scent to it. So uh, that is definitely a plus for me. I'm very excited to try more shades. Very happy that these are permanent. So I think that's probably the standout from the Suku collection. Following that though, it's a definitely, it's a really tough to decide between the eyeshadow palette or the liquid eyes in 103. Honestly, that really surprised me. I might have to put the liquid eyes above the eyeshadow palette this time. I really think it's just such a great one and done, and I love being able to build it up to that purple. So I think that's where I am on that, followed by the eyeshadow palette and then the blush, of course. So thank you so much to Suku for gifting these to me. And Again, we're looking at a launch on the 25th of January at Selfridges and February 1st for La Bombe Marche Reeve Gauche <laughs> and then February 8th for Harrods Liberty London and Cult Beauty. So stay tuned for part two when I'm able to pick up the rest of the items. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you very soon.